Excellent. Thank you, Chike, for that amazing keynote. Uh, and I'd like to now welcome everyone once again to the 2021 XR Access Symposium. Uh, I'm Dylan Fox. I'm the Coordination and Engagement Team Lead for XR Access, uh, and I'm here with Jesse Taft, who's our Research Initiative Coordinator. Uh, now, at this point, Jesse and I are going to spend just a few minutes and tell you about XR Access itself. Uh, I'd also like to re remind everyone that you can network with our fellow participants uh, on our 2021 Symposium Slack channel, uh, which you can find at bit.ly slash XR Access 2021 Slack. So, if you haven't heard of us, uh, XR Access is a nonprofit organization with one purpose, making XR technologies accessible to everyone. Uh, we were founded in 2019 as a coordinated effort of Cornell Tech, Verizon Media, uh, and supported by the Partnership on Employment and Accessible Technologies, uh, PEAT, out of the Department of Labor. And today we are formally based out of a center at Cornell Tech. Now, we have a vision of a future where XR is accessible. Uh, this is a world where inclusive design and development becomes a core part of all XR creation, and everyone in the XR industry understands their importance. Uh, a world where resources on XR accessibility are well-maintained, well-informed, and in widespread use. Uh, a world where people with disabilities have a voice and are playing active roles in shaping XR technologies. Uh, and a world where beyond ability, people of all ages, races, orientations, and socioeconomic backgrounds uh, can participate and make full use of XR technologies. So that sounds great. How are we actually going to do it? Uh, well, we've broken down the work that needs to be done into three major areas and established a work stream for each one. Uh, now, these work streams are places where people from all kinds of backgrounds, from tech to healthcare, education to government and more, uh, can come together once a month and collaborate with one another. Um, help each other understand the challenges that folks in each uh, each area face and help create solutions that work for everyone. Um, now, the three work streams are, number one, inclusive design of XR uh, or IDXR. This is the what. Uh, what does it mean for XR to be accessible? Um, this work stream conducts lots of user research, uh, does extensive uh, user research and, and first-hand experience gathering from people with disabilities. Um, it does collaboration with groups like the W3C, uh, innovates on design solutions that can help solve some of these accessibility challenges. Uh, the second group is Accessible Development of XR, or ADXR. This is the how. Uh, how do we actually create accessible software and hardware? Uh, this work stream focuses on making guidance for developers, uh, laying groundwork for things like the accessibility object model that can help tools like screen readers work in XR, um, and solving some of the practical problems of accessibility. Uh, and then finally, we have the business cases for inclusive XR, or BCXR. And this is the why. Why does XR accessibility matter? And not only for all the good ethical reasons, but why should business owners, product managers, investors care about XR accessibility beyond lip service? You know, we want to lay down the reasons that accessibility is an attractive business investment so that designers and developers get the resources they need to create accessible solutions. So all of these work streams are focused on users. You know, we should never forget that people with disabilities need to be heard and need to be a part of all of these conversations. Uh, and if you're attending these symposium, we want you to be a part of these conversations as well. Um, we need volunteers to join these work streams and contribute not only their technical expertise, but also their challenges. You know, we want to understand what problems you're facing um, and how the people that have the opportunity to change these technologies to make them more accessible should be addressing them. So with that, I'll go ahead and pass it to Jesse to talk about our research network uh, and what you can do to help make XR more accessible. Jesse? Thank you, Dylan. So as Dylan mentioned, so research, whether in basic science or in more complex applications, especially in a new field like XR accessibility, relies really heavily on collaboration between scientists and open sharing of ideas in order to be successful. So to help make that happen, we've created the XR Access Research Network Center here at Cornell Tech to connect researchers at universities, nonprofits, and other organizations that work in research to one another and to the opportunities they need to advance their work um, and to address the scientific and societal concerns that will ultimately help them enrich lives. The network is going to provide the kind of practical and community support to researchers, like facilitating networking and research sharing, um, 
a regular seminar series to help researchers gain recognition and form and sustain new collaborations and educational opportunities to help students develop into a new generation of leaders in accessibility research. So in the future, we're also hoping to provide growth opportunities like seed funding for emerging research projects and opportunities to commercialize projects and translate them into real world impact. So as you can see, between the work streams and research, there is a lot going on. There's a lot of activity that we will be sustaining over the coming years. And to do all this, we'll need your support. So individual members of the XR Access community are the ones who drive our work streams forward, connect us across fields, and help us create impact where it's needed. If you're an individual member and you'd like to get involved more deeply, maybe you're not involved in a work stream and you'd like to be, we absolutely encourage you to reach out um, and we'll help you get more involved in a way that works for you. There are also opportunities for nonprofits, universities, and companies in the XR and accessibility space to join us as in institutional members to, to support our mission to make the future more inclusive. Institutional members are going to help us by serving on our steering committee as leaders, um, and donations from corporate members will help sustain the initiatives, work streams, research, and other programming. So if you're interested in learning more about membership at any level, um, please get in touch with us and we would love to have you involved. And now I am very pleased to hand it off to Christine Hemphill, who is moderating our panel on Designing for Equity.